Hey guys, it's Mrs. White, and we're going to do the first section of Chapter 8, and Chapter 8 is all about right triangles. So we're going to start talking about the Pythagorean Theorem, which you've actually learned about before. And it talks about the relationship between the side lengths that we list as A, B, and C. Now it has to be a right triangle because we talk about C being the hypotenuse, which is always across from the 90, and A and B are our legs of the triangle. So we're talking about the relationship that these three sides have with each other in any right triangle. And the relationship in the formula we have figured out is that c squared is always equal to your a squared plus b squared. Now, I always tell you to write your c squared to the left-hand side, and you'll see why when we talk about the converse of this theorem. So if you start, let's try this first problem, asking for x, which is your hypotenuse, or I'm just going to label c there, because that's what we're really finding. So this is our c, our a, and our b. So we're going to fill in the blanks of the equation. It's going to be x squared equals your a squared plus b squared, 8 squared plus 6 squared. Okay, so let's go ahead and square what we can. So x squared stays the same. 8 squared is 64. 6 squared is 36. Okay, so let's combine. x squared equals 100. And now we're trying to find x not x squared, so to get rid of the square, we have to take the square root of both sides. That will leave us with x, and 10 is our final answer. So we're going to be really good at doing squares and square roots by the end of this chapter. That is our side length of our hypotenuse. Let's do a couple more, but if you see in the directions, it says leave your answer in simplest radical form, if it's not a whole number. So let's go ahead and do number two. x, once again, is our c, so we're going to do x squared equals 15 squared plus 36 squared, okay? So once we do that, we notice that x squared equals 225 when we square this, and 36 squared is 1296, okay? Once we combine like terms, and then we solve for x, and square root everything, because that's what we're gonna do is square root this, you should get x to be the whole number of 39. Okay, and since it's a whole number, we don't have to do simplest radical form, so we'll keep it like this. Let's go ahead and do number three together, and then I'll have you do number four on your own, or if you want to work ahead, it's, you know, it, it's at your pace, so do what you need to do. Eight is now our hypotenuse, so this is our C. So now we're going to do eight squared equals our A squared, X squared, plus B squared, four squared. So you really have to pay attention to what is located across from your 90 degree. So we're still going to solve this equation by squaring what we can. So 64 equals x squared plus 16. That's what 4 squared is. Now, to get x by itself, we're just solving this equation. So we're going to subtract 16 from both sides. By doing that, we're left with 48 equals x squared. Okay? So get rid of the square. We take the square root, and we're left with the square root of 48. Now, that is not a perfect square. So what we're going to do is break down 48 into our factor tree, and we're, I'm just going to pick two numbers, 6 and 8. We've done this with Ms. Hurst. Okay. Another two numbers that break down 6 is 3 and 2. Oops, that's not really 2. Okay, 3 and 2. And then 8 is 2 and 4. And then I'm going to bring these down because we still have to do 4, which ends up being 2 and 2. So now remember, we're circling our pairs. We have a set of twos and a set of twos and threes by itself. So remember, we're going to put one two on the outside. Okay, that takes away that pair times the other two, that pair. And then three does not have a pair. It goes underneath the square root. So now two times two is four. So four square roots of three is that in simplest radical form. Okay, so let's take a look at number four. They're both x's. Sorry, this x kind of fell down below. So both sides of this triangle are x. So go ahead, pause, see if you can figure this out, and then we'll do it together. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at this one. Now, it's an isosceles triangle because x and x has two sides the same, but let's just plug it into the formula. 6 squared equals x squared plus x squared, okay? 6 squared is 36. Now, to combine like terms here, an x squared and an x squared leave you with 2x squared. Don't put x to the fourth. That's not how you combine that. So now we got to get x by itself, so we're going to divide out both sides by 2. Okay? That leaves us with um, 18 equals x squared, and then we're going to have to square root that. And so we're left with the square root of 18, which is not a perfect square. So let's break that down into our factor tree. 9 times 2 is what comes to mind, 
and then three times three, and we'll bring down the two. So we have a pair of threes that goes on the outside, okay? And then square root of two goes on the inside. So that's that number in simplest radical form. All right, here is a work problem. It says a 16-foot ladder rests against the side of the house. So I'm just gonna draw this out, draw a little house to visualize. Here's a little house, here's a little ladder, okay? Here's our ground, which ends up making a 90 degree angle with the house. So that's where we're getting our right triangle. It says the ladder that is leaning, so that's where the 16 goes. Against the side of the house, and the base of the ladder is four feet away. So the base of the ladder, which is located here, is four feet away from that house. So four goes down there. Now I want to know how high above the ground is the top of the ladder. Well, here's the top of the ladder, so our X is this side of our triangle. So if you just redraw on the side, if you see, you have 16, 4, and x. Okay, so that's a normal triangle. So go ahead and pause and solve for the height of the ladder up the side of the house. Hopefully you have gotten 16 squared should equal 4 squared plus x squared. Since 16, the ladder is your hypotenuse. And then when you solve it out, you should get x to be about 15.5. It doesn't say simplest radical form. It just says approximately. So I rounded, so 15.5 is your answer. This is the last concept of the day. It's called the converse. So this converse, remember, is flipping it. Before it said if you had a right triangle, then you could use Pythagorean theorem. Hence this one, that if c squared equals a squared plus b squared, it's a right triangle. But not all triangles are right triangles. What if when you plugged our three numbers into the formula, your c squared ends up being less than your a squared plus b squared, then it's an acute triangle. It won't be a right triangle. Likewise, if you plug it in and your c squared is greater than okay, your a squared plus b squared combined, then it's an obtuse triangle. And if you think about it, acute's the smaller angle, so less than. Obtuse is the bigger angle, so that's how you can think of greater than. I put the little boxes, so when we do our formulas, I'm going to write that little box because that's what we need to fill in the blank. Is it going to be equal? Is it going to be less than? Or is it going to be greater than? So that's what we're going to fill into our box. So let's take a look at this first triangle. First off, since we don't have a 90 degree angle, we got to figure out which one is going to be our C. Well, our C should always be our hypotenuse, which is always the biggest. So we look for the biggest number, which would be 25 here. That's what I'm going to put as my C. So 25 squared, put my little box, to 15 squared plus 20 squared. Okay? So when we do our algebra, we get 625. To, when you do 15 squared plus 20 squared, 20 squared, you get 625. So if you take a look, what goes inside the box is an equal sign. Therefore, this is a right triangle. So if you see, it's going to be a right angle across from that 25. Okay? So... I would like you guys to try these on your own, the side lengths, and there's choices on the right-hand side, and I'm gonna drag and drop them after we pause it and we come back to the problem. So see if you can figure out what types of triangles these are with the given side lengths. All right, so the first one. Hopefully you got the first one is a right triangle. When you plug in your numbers and you square it, you should get 100 is equal to 100, okay? The second one is obtuse. So when you plug in your numbers, you should have gotten 81 is greater than 74. The third one is going to be acute. Okay, so when you do your numbers and your math, you get 100 should be less than 145. Number four, the fourth one is actually not a triangle. So if you remember how to check if something is a triangle, the two smallest numbers, so 10 plus 12, have to add up and be greater than the third. So really, through all of these, you need to check are the two smallest greater than the third when you add them up. Well, 22 is not greater than 30. So these three wouldn't even form a triangle. So don't be fooled with that type of question, all right? Um, the next one should be a right triangle. When you do the math, you should get 156 is equal to, sorry, 1,156 equals 1,156. And then the last one is obtuse. 
And the numbers are, you should have gotten 2,025 to be greater than 1480. Okay, so that is the 